Our next question is from Miranda. Mm -hmm. And it's a little lengthy, so I'll read through sure. it and then... Then we can discuss it. Yep. She says, I'm reading an excellent book called Healing Developmental Trauma. How early trauma affects self-regulation, self-image and the capacity for relationship. In part two, it talks about how the traumas of neglected basic developmental needs and abuse affect the brain, endocrine system, chemical balance, etc. cetera. Mm. Mm -hmm. It cautions therapists to take the patient slowly through their healing process, especially when there has been severe traumas and abuses. From what I've read of, in a few similar books, John Bradshaw's Homecoming included, they seem to be missing a point between understanding how the soul damage is created and the healing, mm -hmm. or so how the healing takes place. Mm -hmm. With psychotherapy, it seems to take a long time and many sessions for people to become healed. Mm -hmm. From my experience, when people's, mine included, causal emotions are truly released, the law of attraction changed almost instantly, within 24 hours sometimes. Mm -hmm. Would the chemical imbalance be corrected as rapidly as a result of this deep healing or would that take time as creating synapses or grooves in the brain usually happens over time? And if it is not happening instantly, how could the transformation still happen with no relapse? In the case of a person who went through repentance, how lasting would the change be? I noticed that when repentance happens, the changes are much more profound. Mm. Is it safe to say that there's no need to concern ourselves with the chemical imbalance and simply trust that a person will go where they need to go in their emotional processing to the to the degree of their of the desire their desire to feel? Mm. Well, I feel this is a very good question, Miranda. And mm. as a therapist, she's a therapist, I know so. Um, you know, she's got quite a lot of emo background about therapy and she's seen the positive benefits of, of applying the principles of how the human soul functions to her own therapy. So I think we need to probably dissect this entire question. Yes. So let's do that. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> so, Firstly, she talks about a whole series of books, um, some of which are well known, regarding the effect of trauma in your childhood and how it affects the physical aspects of the regulation of your brain, your endocrine system, your chemical balance and, and even your muscular and, and skeletal systems and it does affect all of those things. Yeah. So yes, all of this early childhood trauma does affect your entire body of course because it affects your soul and your soul is connected to your body and so everywhere there is a blockage of some emotion and usually inside of a person who's, who's experienced trauma as a child, a lot of trauma in particular, um, and, and if it's been, you know, systematic trauma, like usually sexual abuses, then of course there are going to be lots of different areas of blockages inside of the soul. Mm -hmm. So in other words, there's going to be energy locked up inside of the soul in lots of different areas of the soul, which will then reflect in the spirit and physical bodies. So you're going to have all aspects of your physical and, and, and spiritual bodies being affected. And because most of this trauma occurred during your developmental years, from the ages before se up to seven years of age, it means that uh, many of these are uh, belief systems that are well established inside of your memory and therefore also well established inside of your brain in terms of how your brain works even. Yeah. So, so all of these things, of course, are true. Mm -hmm. They're all true and they've been proven, I feel, scientifically at this point in time to be true. Yeah. The problem where it all goes awry is, is where we start attributing certain potential causes to these effects. And this is where I feel the medical profession goes out of harmony with the development of scientific fact. Mm -hmm. We can only make statements of scientific fact or... We are just basically, you know, wandering around in the dark. And I feel a lot of the times what happens with, with scientists and, and med the medical profession is a scientific profession is they measure a whole series of effects and then they postulate as to what the causes may be yep. rather than knowing what the causes are. Mm -hmm. 
Now, once you start to understand how the human soul functions, you realize that everything that's happening in the physical body is about the denial of something that's happening in your soul. So everything negative or uh, unhealthy Every, that's happening in the body? Everything. Yeah. Everything, including negative belief systems, mm -hmm. are all the result. They're not the result of chemical imbalances in the brain. They cause chemical imbalances yes. in the brain. So the, the, the chemical imbalances in the brain are the effect of Mm -hmm. these soul-based locked-up emotions, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And these soul-based locked-up emotions cause physical problems in the body. They cause also physical problems in the spirit body. They cause problems with the flow of energy. And anybody who's used to any kind of Eastern or Ch Chinese type of medicine would know that, that emotions prevent the flow of cer certain spirit that they can see in the spirit body prevent the flow of energy in the material body. So therefore, the material body gets affected by, and therefore, not only affected by, but, but unfortunately harmed by the locked up emotions. Now, they also know, many people in Eastern uh, medical professions know, that there is also the attraction of entities. They call them entities, not mm -hmm. spirits, people, but they call them entities from what they call other worlds or whatever, but really they're just spirits who are attracted to these particular injuries who also exacerbate the problem for the person who's gone through these particular traumas. And many times these people have, have influenced the people on earth, many of these spirits have influenced the people on earth during the developmental years of their, of their life. And that, of course, also then means that they are greatly influencing the flow of energy in their body as well. Yeah. So we have all of these combined issues and problems. Mm -hmm. now, now, to then assume that we must go slowly and be careful and all of these other presumptions, there, there's now no scientific evidence for those presumptions, right? There, are, there is a lot of anecdotal evidence because most people who have had trauma during their childhood experience have a lot of deep resistance to experiencing the emotion. Most people who experience childhood trauma want there to be another solution other than feeling their childhood trauma-based emotions. Yep. So they are in a mode already where they want to avoid the experience of these emotions. Since they want to avoid the experience of these emotions, they often are overcloaked or influenced by spirits during the processing of these emotions. As a result, the therapist measures that avoidance through the, the, the psychotic, if you like, episode that the person who's going through the emotion might have experienced, and the therapist becomes very concerned and therefore says, we need to be very, very careful and we need to take it very slow. But that's without a complete understanding of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there are no scientific or psychological journals on the planet today that actually know what's going on mm -hmm. in, complete, in, in, in a, a, in a picture. holistic picture yeah. of what's going on, particularly for early developmental trauma, mm -hmm. but for all forms of trauma, actually. And, and because we don't know, because the, nobody knows, they're all very frightened and therefore they want to take a lot of very, you know, careful consideration. And that, of course, means that there is a very slow process of recovery, if any recovery at all, that mm -hmm. many of these people who have experienced childhood developmental trauma, um, ha you know, many of them don't never recover their entire life or they find their life difficult for most of their life, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be that way. But to not be that way, it requires understanding the soul. Mm -hmm. And this is where I feel every single person who's, in who's doing therapy needs to understand how the human soul functions. Mm -hmm. And we've pointed people all the way through these discussions about emotions, we've pointed them to the series about how the human soul functions. It is an essential piece of material for any therapist, psychologist, psychiatrist, any person who's involved in therapy, any life coach, all of, all of those people involved in those industries need to examine how the human soul functions if they're truly going to have a positive effect on a person. Mm -hmm. Now, Miranda then raises the issue of what happens in her experience. And what she has found is actually true. And that is that 
you don't have to concern yourself about going slowly at, at all. What you need to concern yourself with is the willingness of the patient to actually feel the emotion that occurred during, during their trauma. Mm -hmm. Most patients are unwilling when they begin. Now, because they're unwilling when they begin, because they're afraid of their emotions, they're afraid of how traumatic these emotions are and so forth, there is a high likelihood, at, particularly at the beginning, that if you take them through a process they are unwilling to follow, that they will withdraw from the process and during that time become overcloaked by spirits who, who get involved in the process with them. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's a higher likelihood of them reverting to psychosis or psychotic behaviour during that period of time. Right. If the patient's completely willing emotionally to experience their emotions, there is no danger at all of that occurring. Mm -hmm. And if they allow the emotional experience, as Miranda has found during her own therapist sessions with other people, they will release the causal emotion and their life will instantly demonstrate the change. Now, yeah. it's instant. Now, even though most people only observe it over 24 hours or 48 hours, it's actually an instant change that's occurred in the soul. Now, from that moment on, any physical or psychological or intellectual impairment that has occurred due to that emotion that has been locked up all of that person's life during their life, yep. all of that, all of that, uh, any of that impairment related specifically to the emotion yep. that's been released will also begin its recovery. So it's not instantaneous. But it begins. Well, there are some systems in the, in the, in the body that are instantaneous yep. or relatively instantaneous yep. that will occur over the next few hours. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. Then there are other systems that take days. Yep. There's other systems that take weeks, some take months, and some take up to seven years. Yes. So, so it just depends on which system we're talking about as to how long the recovery will actually take. Yep. Uh, clarifier? Yep. So Miranda in her question poses that if this takes time, why don't, isn't there a, 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 um, a danger of relapse? Because, and this is where she's viewing the physical body as the thing that is directing how Correct. the emotion flows. This is because of her misunderstanding about the soul. Yep. Everything comes from the soul. So there is no danger of a relapse unless the person imbibed the same emotion that they had and the likelihood of them doing that is very highly unlikely. Yep. So there is highly unlikely they will relapse. So when we release something causally, mm -hmm. the change happens in our soul. Instantly. And, well, perhaps we should rewind and recap what you said. Yeah. You said as a child, yes. things are, when there's trauma thing, and that's suppressed, things are retained in the soul. As energy locked up. As energy locked up. They're not being felt as emotion. Yep. They're just energy locked up, not in motion. And this affects the spirit body and the physical body. Yes. So the cause of any issue yes. is in the soul and yes. that's reflected in the spirit and physical body. So Correct. these things that she's talking about, about the endocrinogic, Endo end, endocrine system. system and um, chemical balances in the brain, the synapses in the brain, the, the way you think. The way the, you think even is completely changed. The formation of the The formation brain. of your cells, the damage done to each individual cell in different locations, the different problems you have in different parts of your body. All of these things are the subsequent result of the suppression of the emotion from the child. Yeah. So they are the effect. They're not governing what happens to the emotion. They are the grooves, if you like, that are formed because of the soul's decision to deal with the emotion in a certain way. Yes. And because they're not governing... They, and because they are the effects, they have no governance over the recovery. Yes. Once we recover the soul, then even though the grooves in the brain that she refers to or the functioning of the synapses might yep. still be in a certain way, because the soul has changed, this will gradually create the change in the brain. But the brain is not going to dominate the soul. No. No. And, and many parts of your body change very rapidly, usually within the first 24 to 48 hours. Yep. And, so, and so you will have a large benefit that you will feel in your body, usually within the first 48 hours. 
And then there are other systems in your body that take much, much longer to recover. Mm -hmm. And so therefore will take a longer time and you'll need to drink a lot of water and do things to help your body do that, of course, because there's a lot of toxins now that are going to come out of your body. A lot, a lot of your body's systems will begin operating r correctly. Yes. And as a result, they'll start repairing this long-term problem. And of course, any long-term problem has a lot, a lot of a build-up of long-term issues inside of the body that need to be repaired, and that repair process may take anywhere from hours to years. Yeah. Uh, uh, anywhere up to seven, in fact, mm -hmm. years, uh, depending on what system you're talking about. Now, all of what I said applies unless you've received divine love. <laughs> when you receive divine love. And particularly once you become at one with God, all of your systems in your body are automatically in harmony with that love. So this is how a person who's a healer, who is at one with God, so there's no one on earth in that condition at the moment, but a person who isn't a, is a healer, who is at one with God, can instantly heal certain parts of the body once a person is willing to experience certain emotions associated with the injury in that part of the body. Mm -hmm. So you're saying whereas we might through our own will decide to feel those emotions, release them from the soul, and there'll be a gradual change in the physical body. Yes. When, and when I say gradual, it may be gradual hours right the way through to years. Yeah. Yep. When a person who actually heals using divine love, then the, we still must be willing to release the emotion. And if we do, then the changes in the physical body are instantaneous. Yes, because God's love is able to be used as the healing mechanism of, of the systems affected by that particular emotion. Mm -hmm. So this is how I healed things in the first century. And, and this is how anyone who becomes at one with God can heal other people. Yeah. Of course, there needs to be a willingness inside of the person to address the underlying emotional issues. And that's where most people, you know, that's, why we're try, that's why we're spending this time <laughs> on emotions, because we need to help people come to, to accept the importance of working through and addressing their emotions in terms of even somebody else coming along at some phase, stage in the future and helping them be healed. Yeah. Mm. yeah. There needs to be internally a willingness, you see. And what I, and her, her last statement, I feel, is the important statement. So maybe if you read that again. And... Is it safe to say that there's no need to concern ourselves with the chemical imbalance mm -hmm. and simply trust that a person will go where they need to go in their emotional processing to the degree of their desire to feel. Correct. That is correct. The person will go where they need to go in their processing directly proportional to their <laughs> desire to, to feel. feel. And this is, where, um, this is where therapists can help a person greatly. It's about attempting to help the person understand the way the soul works and the way the physical and material body, the physical and spiritual bodies are affected by the soul so this is a way you can educate people as a therapist. But also the primary education that needs to occur from the therapist to the patient is the education about their will, the exercise of their true desire to feel. Mm -hmm. and, and many people, as I've said right at the beginning of this answer to this question, many people who have had early childhood trauma have very little desire to feel it. And this is why so many damaging results occur when a person goes to a therapist, because they are actually in this lack of desire to feel it still. They want their life to be fixed without having to go through the feelings. So they want some kind of chemical solution, medical solution, some therapist to wave their magic wand and come up with a solution, but they don't want to have to go through the emotional experience. Yeah. And this is the primary problem. Mm -hmm. that causes things like psychotic behaviour during, uh, during the process of trying to help a person through traumatic memories. Yeah. So, so what I'm suggesting to people is if it, you can, it's not good to push the patient mm -hmm. into, a, into being willing to do something they are obviously not willing to do, but you can educate them about their willingness yeah. and the need for them to develop a willingness inside of them and will is like a muscle that needs to be exercised, as we'll talk about many times in the future. Yeah. And so what we need to do is help them see that they can develop their will and grow their will to start to experience and release many of these emotions that they are now safe to experience, 
even though they weren't safe to experience them as a child. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, there is little danger of them, and, and no danger, in fact, at all, of them ever being harmed by spirits or some psychotic episode, which is usually triggered by spirits in some way, um, through their therapy process. And so that means that people don't have to worry about how fast it goes. Yeah. How fast it goes will be dependent completely upon the will of the patient. Yeah. And that's the way it should be, in mm -hmm. fact. And what we can do is help the patient have a developed will so they want to go through it yeah. rather than looking for some magical solution to the problem. 